RTI lives at the intersection of what I think are the two most important thoroughfares uh, in, in technology. It's what I call functional artificial intelligence and pervasive networking. We allow you to connect smart systems to distributed real world systems. Functional artificial intelligence doesn't necessarily mean, you know, machine learning and neural networks, but it just means smart enough systems they can do things like take better care of patients in hospitals or drive your car or you know, do a better job of controlling a, a power grid. And pervasive networking means networking that's really able to put together large amounts of um, you know, systems in the field. Today there's really no computing in the field of the power grid. We're trying to build microgrids and smart intelligent grids. Our fastest growing market is autonomous vehicles of various types. Uh, we're in 14 different production track autonomous vehicles ranging from passenger cars like Mercedes, Airbus is building a flying car, GE transportation, big train systems, uh, mass transit systems, underwater vehicles where are pretty much dominant in the, in the, in the military ship in the area, commercial shipping and even oil and gas drilling, we're just in many different areas. In all of these things we provide a reliable, fast, infrastructure that can make the system work as one. So RTI's role is we are an infrastructure provider. We really, uh, we sell trust. We have many customers that are building uh, very important infrastructure. Some of our biggest customers, GE Healthcare, is building over 300 kinds of devices you see in a hospital like ventilators and respirators and oximeters and ECG monitors and taking them Today are independent devices that can't check up on each other and watch you when the doctors can't when you're in the room or even in the ICU and making that an intelligent system. We're actually uh, controlling the largest power plants in North America, Grand Coulee Dam, and now being ported to all the other large hydropower plants in North America because those are very fast suppliers of power onto the grid and we can control them accurately and quickly to make that happen. We sell a product uh, called Connects DDS, really a, a data science approach to connectivity. I know that's going to sound confusing to a lot of people. It's not a messaging system, it's not just public subscribe, it's not a, a SOA service oriented architecture. It's really a new architecture that's data centric, meaning that you have a, a way to share information and find information in the future. So, a, data bus, a database is data-centric storage and databases run all the enterprises in the world today because you can use relations of the data to find out things like employees of real-time innovation is in Spain or in Spain here and you know, have been working for the company for more than two years. It, you can very selectively find things, but databases only work with old stored data. Uh, notice that your interface is just with the database. The data bus, the same kind of technology except it's aiming at future data and it's fast enough to do things like sensor integration, find uh, incoming vehicles, you're doing an autonomous car, do feedback loops, we even have some customers doing feedback loops in multiple kilohertz range. So you actually don't have to you know, build a bunch of disconnected systems and integrate them later, we actually provide the technology to large, large software teams put their work together into a working system that's going to be reliable, fast, large software teams, connect lots of different things and lots of other different things, and an architecture that will grow with the future to be uh, the wonder of the industrial internet of things, which is going to change the world.